from you. So I'm going to get started and as a few people join in, we, we will we'll let them in and they'll just pick up from, from where we are. So a very big welcome to everyone. It's fabulous to have so many people join us in the session today where I'll be going through a little bit of the key themes, the key ideas that came out of the training magazine conference that I attended in Orlando this year. I think it's either my 12th or 13th year of attending. I mean, obviously, COVID gave us a, a bit of a, a break from it. And it was just interesting to see that it was well attended again. The setup of the conference was a little bit different from what had been happening in the past. But certainly, there's definitely a, a, a good groundswell and a good vibe around learning and development once again. So just again, before we start, just a, an acknowledgement to country um, for those of you, and I'm sorry, I haven't asked if there is anyone here of Aboriginal descent who'd like to read it for us, but certainly MCI acknowledges the, trust, uh, the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their continuing connection to land, sea and community, and we pay our respects to them, their cultures, to their elders, past, present and emerging. So. Very quickly, a brief intro if you haven't heard of us before, that's not a good thing at all. But MCI, in fact, this year is our 20th year. So we're hoping to have a really good celebration, look out for some celebratory events that we have. But we've been doing a lot around accredited training, different types of training solutions for clients. We won so many awards. I think it's more than 35 by now, but definitely been around for many a year and continuing to innovate as well. Just to let you know that we are also part of the APM group. APM is listed on the ASX and some of you might see some of these brand names that you might be familiar with or in fact might be using. So it's a really large organisation. They're the largest human services provider in Australia and we're very proud and excited to be part of their family. So what we're covering today is quickly a review of the key themes of the conference because there were some, I would say, some very noticeable trends that were emerging during the conference in terms of how many people spoke about them, how many presenters, keynote speakers really adopted and focused and honed in on those themes. We'll also be looking at different ways in which companies are starting to approach learning. And towards the end of the session, we're going to have an app smash. So if you've got your phone handy, keep it handy because we're going to show you some of the exciting new apps, many of which are free, that you could possibly look at integrating into your full learning strategy. So I hope everyone gives me a thumbs up and all ready uh, for that and welcome as well to some familiar faces and some, some new faces here as well. So I'm going to ask you in a moment to get your hands ready to type in the chat and ask you what you think the top three or four themes were of the conference. But I will give you a little bit of a hint. So in previous years, we always do the same opening activity. What do people think the key themes were? And here are some of the themes that we've seen in previous years. So 2018 spoke a lot about the use of the virtual classroom. I had to put the smiling emoji there in the laugh because, <laughs> you know, 2018, let me tell you, it wasn't so easy to sell virtual live classes to anyone. People get saying, no, it's much better to be in the training room. Well, time, time was uh, <laughs> changed a few of minds about that, but there was definitely an emphasis as well on augmented reality, virtual reality virtual reality came up a lot, innovation about how we constantly need to renew and refresh what we do, and storytelling was a key theme in 2018. 
2019 here were the themes. There was first of all the theme around disruption, which I suppose linked a little bit into innovation. Like we've got to do things differently. We we need to change and shake things up. There was a lot of conversation around what constitutes the full spectrum of learning. What are all the learning modalities that we need to include in order to embed learning and to bring people along for the journey? A huge amount of chatter about micro learning. Micro learning, if, they, if I had a dollar for each time they mentioned micro learning, my wallet would have been really full. And then again, the theme of storytelling. So I'm going to ask you to get into chat and I can see that quite a few people are already chatting and giving us some of the themes and I'm going to ask you skip forward now to 2023 type in chat and tell us what do you think the key themes were what do you think they constantly spoke about presenters mentioned time and again what do you think came out and I can see people are still talking micro learning AI yes 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 David yes yes Chat GPT was there. Absolutely learner centric, interactive, gaming. Ooh, who's giving us gamification? Have you sat in this already and giving us a sneak preview there? OMG. Theo, yes, all of those. Absolutely. Thank you to everyone for giving us the, the ideas around what you think the key themes are. We're still getting tech, micro, data. Yes, yes, yes. Gamification. I think you guys have sat in this session. All right, so for those of you who put in gamification or anything remotely similar to gamification, you're on the money. I cannot tell you how many times that word came up, that if you don't gamify things, if you don't help people to really feel motivated, if you don't help them to see some sort of end point and get excited by learning, we're missing a huge opportunity. So thinking about different game elements, different game mechanics that you might see in contexts that have nothing to do with L&D, but using those and incorporating those into training programs online and in person or in the virtual um, Teams, Zoom world, all of them. And the emphasis was very much on because gamification can be so affordable, so budget friendly, tapping into, you know, that child in us that wants that little bit of extra excitement. Even if we're working remotely, we still want the feeling of that. We want that feeling of how do we get to win? How do we get to the other side so that we feel even if the win is a badge or a tick, that sense of accomplishment does make an enormous difference. We There were many examples at the conference of how do you bring people back into a training room post COVID? What do we do to entice them there? We can't go back to opening those old workbooks again. Everyone turn to page five. Like those days are over. You want people back in the room. You can't be doing the same old stuff with them again. It's got to be that fun, that engagement, something that also has a purpose. We're not just a throwing our arms up and doing rah, rah, rah for no reason. It does have a purpose in that it links to the training. So this is a, a really good a little snippet of a video. I don't know if some of you um, remember this particular campaign where they were launching uh, Coke Zero into the marketplace and trying to attract a different kind of age group. So I'm going to play this very short video for you and have a look as we go through the as the video progresses as to what sort of game elements and game mechanics you notice. And then obviously the discussion would be how do we take those go game mechanics and elements from the marketing world and implant them into our learning world. So here we go.
<laughs> okay, sorry for a couple of you who uh, maybe couldn't see see that video, but we will send out all the links. We will send you copies of the slides as well. So um, there are quite a few links coming up as and. Uh, we'll send those to you afterwards but i hope you enjoyed that and got a sense of just what's possible why should all that fun stuff live in the marketing world who, who, who ever decreed that that's where it should remain why can't we bring all of that when you are able then to integrate it and use it in different formats but in the learning and development world so i hope that you all noticed obstacles, race against time, the incentive at the end. But the, the one or two of the guys weren't even worried that they hadn't been given their special pass to, to the event. They were just so happy because everyone was clapping for them. So that was their reward and their sense of accomplishment that they used the countdown, they got there in time, there were the few little surprises, but there was an outcome and people were able to feel that a bit of joy and engagement along the way. And so the challenge was, why can't we use some of those elements from marketing, from any other games that you might be aware of, that you play with your kids and use them in the learning world as well, with the points, the badges, leaderboards, countdowns, those uh, surprise Easter eggs or, you know, those surprise things that you suddenly find somewhere, unlock things so that you're able to go forward, a bit of sort of role playing, a, a, introducing anything that makes the experience a lot more positive and a lot more engaging than we traditionally do. Spice it up a bit. We've got people who may be feeling a bit disconnected. They're working from home or from other offices. We still need that same spirit in training if we want to and if we are determined to really embed the, the learning and the key messages that um, that we are doing. So there's a lot behind gamification, and I'm not going to go right into that today, but I think that for some common sense ideas, things that we see around us that are simple, you don't have to make it so overly complicated that the rules of the game become too complex and people disengage anyway. We obviously want to try and personalize it. I think you saw in the video as well that that's why they made them type their name in. So when the girl jumped out to greet them, she said, oh, hi, Anthony. And if possible, it's not always possible, but if we can get to that level of making it so specific to the personas and to at least our learning personas, I think that we could do that. I mean, it's, if you just think about so many other parts of the business that could do with a bit of gamification as well, it, it, they are endless possibilities. So it's really putting on our creative and innovative hat and letting us try something a little bit different. Um, it can be low tech. It, it, it really doesn't have to be this very sophisticated uh, way of playing a game, but it can't be for the sake of the game. You do have to have a context and it does have to have something where you can people can join the dots. Like, why did I do that? It, it does need to um, be situated and contextualized in that way. So people are very sure of what they needed to learn afterwards. Not oh, I just had a great fun time you know what was the point of that so one of the great things that um, is available and we will send you this link is that after authors have been dead for many many years what this project Gutenberg has done is that it's taken some of the old stories um, and put them online and that's a great inspiration sometimes for games because you can scroll through and have a look. There's um, quite a few of the old fairy tales and a few sort of stories about heroes that are online and totally free to use as a way of just shaking it up and getting the game started. So this, for example, is one that uh, we came up with. If you think about Snow White, I don't think it's so politically correct to call them the seven dwarves anymore, but that's a discussion for another day. 
but you could perhaps make each module, each part of the training into a character. There's grumpy Gus who doesn't want to get hurt. There's the huntsman who could be the contractor, you know, who changes your whole workplace safety environment. There could be sleepy Sam who caused the incident. So using the story suddenly creates another story for you to implement in an online e-learn, in a video, in an uh, any little tiny micro learning piece that you send out. So many people are listening because it's leading us into the next um, part of it, which does include storytelling. So whoever wrote storytelling, you're on the mark as well. So here's theme number two. So first of all, did everyone like the first thing with the gamification? Can you see yourselves using it, trying things a bit differently, changing things up a bit? So thank you, seeing a few thumbs up on that one. Second theme is blended learning. And lots of you wrote in, in the chat different wording for blended learning, uh, you know, it, whatever term you gave to it. But again, the message was so strong that we cannot rely on this clickety click and get your finger gets a better workout than your brain. We just can't do that. We've become in l and the topic of memes, of jokes. And for anybody who's on Instagram, if you follow MBA-ish, if somebody can just type the, the Instagram <laughs> thing in there, you'll see we're the butt of jokes. Do we really want that? Do we really want to keep torturing people through the same traditional ways of doing things? And in this new blend now, without question of a doubt, if again I had my dollar for each time they use the word video, <laughs> I forgot which word I'm going to say, video, I would really, my wallet would be so full. Because video is now completely leading the way when it comes to the blend. So video is right in there. I'm not going to read those statistics to you. You can see them on the screen. It's a lot of people in the world using and referring to video. And I don't need to tell you yourselves. You know, I want to change the, the battery in, in my remote. I don't know how to do it. Where do I go first? If you think that I go to the LMS and try to scroll through blah, 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 to find out how to do that, you're dreaming. I go to YouTube. And we do, as learning and development people, have to take cognizance of that. I think I see Derek here from Learning Planet. Have a look at their site as well. It's video. It's video. That is the expectation. And if you think about those funny cat videos, and I'm not going to play one right now, but those videos that go, you know, the cat jumping and it fell and oh, those videos have something like, I don't know how many million, can somebody tell me how many million views these cat videos want? But this is what people want. They want the TikTok version. Thank you. <laughs> you, took, you took the words out of my mouth. They want the TikTok version. We are goldfish. Our attention span is short and we're being schooled now by the social media platforms to anticipate video. So if you don't deliver me video, if you're going to deliver me these static old slides, I'm not going to be a happy person. I'm going to try and get through it as quickly as I can. I'm not going to learn anything. So we need to go where our learners are not where we want them to come. They want to be in video. They want YouTube. They want TikTok. I simply don't understand why we wouldn't deliver it to them in that format. And nobody's talking a big budget here. We're not talking Hollywood because with our simple phones, and thank goodness I'm upgrading soon to a new phone, the camera there is fine. Those videos of the cats have this phone shaking like this or the kid at the back of the car. The phone is literally shaking and people are still watching the video. No problem. Millions of them are watching it. 
So please, the entry level is pretty low. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it out there. If we are going to spend months and months on our planning and where it will be videoed and how it will be videoed, they've gone to YouTube long ago and we're still sitting there waiting for them to come to us. So the new people to follow now are not L&D people. The new people to follow if you want to, and we will send you these links, is that yes, it, it, it's content creators. Go and look at the influencers. Go and look at how people are conveying their messages in short, sharp, different ways. And thank you to everyone who's putting um, such great comments into, into the chat as well. It can be longer. It can be shorter. Nobody's going to watch an hour of video. I mean, let's face it, even the recording of this webinar, how many people are going to sit and watch it without zoom, 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 go faster, faster, when they don't like what I'm saying? So it's a different mode now, and that our gurus are different people. They're now content creators. The, a lot of talk around these new kind of words of valuetainment. Ed, I think we've had edutainment before as one of those kind of buzz phrases, but valuetainment is coming out really strongly that that's where we're going to be. You know, what's to say that we can't have a playlist on our LMS of all TikTok type videos? Why aren't we doing podcasts? Why aren't we doing things in a different way to shake it up a bit? Go to where people are, give them the call to action, absolutely. But it does force us as well to boil it down to what they need to know. Not so many of those nice to know, nice to knows that we can sometimes, sometimes creep into our training. I mean, I have to put up my hand here. Please don't think I'm pointing fingers at you in any way because I'm guilty of this uh, just, just as much. And so again and again, speaker after speaker kept saying done is better than perfect. Don't have so many excuses about things and think about delivering it out in a different way besides forcing people into the LMS where they don't want to be. There's definitely API links now, better ways of getting the, you know, who's attended, who hasn't, who's completed, who hasn't. We can do that with out dumping them into a place where they just simply aren't happy and so we'll get out of there as fast as they can. And you know, Pam Jeeves giving great examples there. Thank you to everyone giving examples of different ways in which you can use video. Um, if others have got any other ideas around how you would introduce videos, um, type into chat as well. You know, I'm thinking onboarding programs, interviewing someone, you know, what do you wish you knew when you first started here? Or let's bust some myths about something or a day in the life of our workplace safety officer, follow the person around, show a few of the hazards. I, I really think that if we start looking at TikTok, Instagram, doing things differently, we're going to find so many ideas. And I hope everybody is agreeing with me on this and I'm uh, not uh, preaching to the not converted. So, and there Derek gives a great example as well about, yes, changes in policy and procedure. Do we need to really send that out in an email or send a PDF about it? Come on. I think that those days are really over and Richard as well. Yeah, multiple forms of delivery. That's what people are expecting. And, and uh, David, thank you. Just a quick note around the virtual classroom because it is here to stay, is that I think we, we've got to get a little bit better at it as well. I think that we've, you know, gotten used to sit at our desk and it's like another meeting on Teams or Zooms. You know, I don't think we can become complacent. What was really interesting at the conference is you can see this guy over here, um, and maybe uh, Vanessa, if you can just make a note, we'll send a, um, a link to to his uh, book as well. Is that the you can see his whole setup? They had this chap running the entire day 
So you could drop into his studio at any time, a kind of personalized learning experience so that people could really see what it takes to be, become very professional at doing um, webinars, at doing live uh, virtual events. And and thank you, um, Heather, for, for questions around video. Certainly the cartoons are still there, that is still happening. But what people are definitely doing is just simply using their phones. The phone on a little tripod, good lighting, good sound, and going from there and obviously getting some of the editing done as well. So um, there are some, some further ideas for you. But I just, what I want to say is just think about as well, we don't have people coming for the lunches anymore. So instead of paying for their lunches or for traveling, remember when travel had to be the biggest budget ever to get people into a room and you had to accommodate them the night before. Anyone who's old enough can remember those days. Invest a little bit of that money and seriously, it's it's not um, a huge a huge amount of money. Um, to get your sort of TV studio set up, the green screen, the mixer, I don't think that these things are in any way break the budget, but it is helping you to just get a slightly better quality of video or a slightly better quality for the virtual class, the Teams, the, the Zoom. You know, it, there was a lot of talk about these collaborative whiteboards. I'm sure most of you are using them. If you're not, um, the, there are two examples. I think that one of, one of these is now integrated into Zoom, if I'm not mistaken. But re, what, what I'm saying is just start stretching the boundaries a little bit more. We don't want things to become stayed and, you know, just complacent again. I don't want us to slip, slip back into that. Just anything you can do to make things stand out so that when people come into a webinar live session which is a, a training the main purpose of it they don't feel like they're in another zoom let's just turn our cameras off let's not engage in chat let's not do the you know like why why are we torturing them in that way when we can make it so much more exciting and please keep um watching the chat there there's some fabulous suggestions from um, some of the participants here around what you can do and how you can do things differently. So thank you for sharing uh, those ideas, really, really great ones. So obviously we still have to improve our facilitation skills in this mode, including the video, getting the guest speakers in, subject matter experts, case studies, interesting slides, and people are giving so many fabulous examples there in the chat as well, just to think about how we just want to shake it a little bit and not become complacent, because I don't want us to get back into the same situation we were in five years ago, where the training room itself became a bit to sort of bland, to bleh. We don't want to be like that. We want to keep moving ahead and trying things out differently. And certainly what is emerging, and there were a couple of sessions around hybrid facilitation where you've got some people in the room and some people online as we are now. It's, I think, a particularly challenging way to facilitate because you've got so many you know, you've got a lot happening. Where do you turn as a as a facilitator? Who are you looking at? Where do you position yourselves? How do you make sure everybody's included? So I think there's going to be a lot more that emerges in the field of hybrid facilitation, just as something to to watch out for. And I totally agree with Ellen there. It's very hard to to manage that type of room. So let's see what emerges in in that field because it is something that I think is totally in, evolving and that we need to be aware of in terms of mechanics, activities, like how do some people do some activities, other people online are doing another activity. It, it, it's particularly difficult to, to get that, the full engagement that we need. So, theme number three, 
who had theme number three written as storytelling? I think I did see quite a few people. Yeah, yeah, I see a few thumbs up coming there. Yeah. Won that gamification part of it. But storytelling, if you think about every previous conference where storytelling had come up as a theme, there it was again. Without a question of a doubt, how can we use storytelling in different ways to make people more engaged, to get messages across, to embed learning, to make sure that people apply the skills that we want them to apply, that we want how we want them to behave. So this is one of the keynote speakers um, from Pixar. Apparently, he actually met and worked with Steve Jobs when Steve Jobs was at Pixar. But he said it's the, the reason that learning and develop needs to tap into storytelling much more strongly is because we can make people cry. We're not going to really make them cry. But I think what he's saying is we're going to evoke emotions in them. And once those emotions are up and ready, their ears are open. They're going to be more ready to listen to the key message instead of presenting everything in a factual way. Why can't we do things differently? I mean, look at these statistics. I don't know if the percentages are 100 uh, percent accurate, but certainly people are definitely remembering more when the story is included. And that's a big difference in in the numbers there. So once the story is there, absolutely, we're able then to make sure that people's hearing, they're listening. We give them the key message of what we want them to do, how we want them to gauge, engage. Thanks, Boo. Uh, Richard's given a, a lovely thing there. Yes, I agree with, with Richard's point there around making it authentic. We're not putting on some kind of uh, false thing, but we can evoke those emotions. It releases the dopamine, it helps to inspire us, and it helps people feel good. Why shouldn't we have our learners feeling good about things as well? I, I see that as certainly a critical part of being in L&D, is to uplift people and make them feel that they can make a difference. Think of adverts. Uh, anyone here with the uh, Tiffany fan, but just think of how the stories, the imagery is evoking those emotions. They haven't really said much in, in this particular advert. They've got the girl, the guy, the ring, the box, but there's not a whole long saga about the diamonds that we use at Tiffany's. On a, there's none of that. They're tapping into our emotions, into our feelings, and the story itself is portrayed through the images. And I think that that's something that we could easily do. Why should that live in the advertising world? Same with gamification, living in the marketing world. Why should you know this type of storytelling live in advertising when we could be tapping into it as well? So here are a quick few tips about storytelling, about getting information across in the it, using the number three. How many bullet points can you have? I mean, if you if and I'm guilty of this, I shouldn't be saying you. I should be saying I. When I look back at some of the you know the documentation and the information we've been giving to learners, and these long sagas, like why why couldn't I have condensed it into three? You know, if you think of uh, Steve Jobs, for those of you who were around in 2007, when he introduced the, the iPhone, he spoke about three things, would be an MP3 player, a phone, and it would be able to connect to the internet, um, and we'd ha you have that all on our device. But think about those very strong, powerful speakers, those launches that you go to. If you go to these uh, car launches, for example, they're focusing on the three top parts of that car. They're not going into all the detail. The detail they'll send out afterwards about the engine and the wheels and whatever else it is. If this power of three, I think, can be very powerful for us as well. The storytelling message here as well is, remember, we goldfish, don't have much attention. The story needs a hook. 
we've got to show people what's in it for them. Why am I giving up my time to sit in your training or do your e-learning model? Does it impact me in any way? Will it help me do my job more effectively? And honestly, I am telling myself right now, and I'm giving myself a big slap on the wrist, I am never setting the objectives in the front page of an e-learning course ever again, in front of the front page of any course ever again. I need to know it as the designer and the person behind the scenes, but I don't need to bore my learners, my readers with that information. They want to know what's in it for them. Tell them the story, engage them, hook them into it. Setting up by the end of this course, you will be able to do blah, 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 blah. No, that's not going to be the way to engage them because people will remember how they feel and setting those objectives doesn't relate to how they feel at all. And thank you, I see that we're getting a few <laughs> good likes uh, for my commitment there. You can hold me to it, absolutely. But here are just maybe an easy way of thinking about how to structure a story with the beginning, setting out the problem, because people will respond and say, oh, yeah, 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 that also happens to me. Or I don't, I didn't know something like that, but if I do know it, it can help me. And then in the middle, and this is standard kind of 101 story stuff, but I think sometimes we just need to remember, you know, what we could do around the solution and that might be a, a mini story in itself it doesn't have to be a set of 20 bullet points and click 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 to the next slide and then at the end obviously that sense of excitement it could be the cautionary tale it could be something that inspires us to live by the values of the organization or be very aware when we're dealing with a customer that it doesn't end in a complaint uh, as just some examples so please really consider you know where else you could use storytelling and um, please type into chat is there something that you could shake up that you could mix into this blended learning scenario that focuses on the story and how we could engage inspire evoke emotions in people so that we see change we see changes in skill levels we see changes in behavior and helen's given a perfect place to me would be induction i mean to me that's an absolute no no brainer and um, foundation for case studies make them come alive yes love that great great suggestions coming out there so what we're moving on to now is an app smash and what was really interesting at the conference is that in the expo hall they had i mean you're thinking thousands of people coming to this conference but there was a whole area that they cordoned off that they called the test kitchen and in the test kitchen there were so many different things that you could walk around and explore or sit and listen to a few people talking about different ways of doing things and you know it, it, it's really fabulous to me to think that at last we, we we really are starting to push boundaries with technology and using technology as our friend and without question chat gpt is everybody signed up onto chat gpt i've just upgraded myself to the paid version i'm so in love with it my new best friend is chat gpt <laughs> and i see a few people are saying yes 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 and um, but i love this little um phrase or saying uh, that that was mentioned around artificial intelligence as being the new electricity and we're only at the start of that journey but i'm really hoping that people are going to get onto this artificial intelligence journey don't be put off by all the naysayers there are problems with it there's no doubt i don't know if it's always so friendly towards women and all other types of groups i don't know but without question if you just have a look at those statistics i mean it's like wow seven weeks later after launch they're already at 100 million users and i don't even know the latest statistics of where they are now so if it's being used in so many other ways, why shouldn't we use it in learning and development as well? 
you know, like who's to say that we should be any different? I'm sorry for instructional design this year, but it's going to change how instructional design works, I believe, because I'm going to hand over to our lovely Katrina here, who is my moderator and assistant, and she's going to give you an example of how sharing from her screen how chat gpt works so what she did is we decided before the session sorry i didn't ask anyone for their input on this one but we decided before the session that we'd be a learning and development manager in some big corporate organization and we prompted because that's the key to chat gpt you do have to prompt it correctly to create an outline for us for a customer service training program that's going to be deployed in a call center and we just told it as well that the team has no experience so i'm just using this as an example if you were to use this genuinely you'd spend a bit more time giving chat gpt a little bit more of a heads up around your audience and the type of information you'd like them to have Hit go, Katrina, and let's see what emerges. Let's see the magic. All right, so here goes ChatGPT. <laughs> I can see somebody's mouth literally dropping open. Absolutely. How do you like that? I mean, if we're not using this, I think that we seriously need to, to think again. Look at the speed of it. I'm not saying for one moment that every bit of what was done in this chat GPT is 100% perfect. It's not going to be exactly what we use. Absolutely not. But gee, there's a lot there. The next step you could say to it, Ellen, absolutely. You could say from what chat, GPT, what you've written, I'm still very polite to it. So I say, please, could you tell me what are the three top things that you would include or the three priority things that you would include in this particular training program? And it will write it for you. You could even then go further and ask yeah, there it's doing it for us so we asked it for what the the priority and it's giving us the priority if we had a bit more time here i would then go on to asking it to take one of the modules and write for me because remember chat gpt is smart enough now to pass medical exams so Yes, it's scraping knowledge and there's a whole other discussion about where it's actually scraping the knowledge from and who's doing the scraping. I'm not going to get into these kinds of ethical issues, but without question, it's delivering us really quickly some results there. So I hope I've made my point there about um, what, what we need to do as we, as we go through this. So I'm just going to share back. Oh, where am I? Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, guys, I'm just sharing back into my PowerPoint. And going through with you again, do I need to share the screen? Share. I'm there, it's just not coming up. It's thinking, thinking, thinking. All right. Um, what I just want to show you then as well is a little bit about ooh, this thing is sensitive. Do you, you want to <laughs> find me where I am? <laughs> Thank you. It's not behaving itself terribly well. There we go. All right. So what I'm saying with ChatGPT is that without question, we are going to see some very big changes in how course material is designed, how we are going to conceptualize things, ideate about new programs, give examples. But the key to it, if you do want to go this route and speed things up and become more efficient, is going to be about training ChatGPT to work for you, to write in your in your tone of voice, how you want things, giving it examples, accepting that you are going to have to edit as well, and accepting that you're going to have to think about, you know, 
that there might be spell check. It might be writing in American English. You might have to change a few things, but nonetheless, it's going to be a huge time saver. It's going to be giving you a load of ideas and you'll copy and paste. I just uh, a, a caution there as well is that uh, if you do use chat GPT, the free one, I would take whatever you want and copy and paste it into a word or into a PowerPoint or something else, because sometimes the system gets a bit overloaded and it boots you out and then what you've written before doesn't appear. So it's not perfect yet, but you saw within literally one minute what what happens and Heather all I can tell you is that we get through the APM firewall and if you can get through the APM firewall you get through Fort Knox so definitely keep that in mind another one that that I think could be useful it's not as good as chat GPT but if you need some images now you can and we will send you these links if you now want images that are uniquely yours nobody else has it no copyright is on it there we go to Dali and Dali I hope you like the image on my screen does everyone like that image that's a Dali image nobody else owns it in the whole wide world except me it generated that image for me so instead of spending hours and hours going through trawling through articulate and whatever library of images i just told joy dolly what i wanted and up it came so the potential is there and the potential is enormous they showed us a lot of other image generators i'd say that these are in the initial stages but we will send you these links and please just explore and um, have a you know have a think about um how how you could use it um absolutely and amy you're stealing my limelight because i'm coming to canva as well and um, for those of you who asked earlier about videos um, one, two, three apps is a great one for doing video editing. So it helps you to, you know, just tighten things up a little bit, takes out the ums and the ahs and the, the pauses. So it, it's really easy to use. I take myself as the example, if I can use it, then I believe that that everyone else can and we will send we will send that to you as well. Um, since I've written this, the, the set of slides, G, uh, chat GPT is is here already and so much more is coming. They're going to be doing it in different languages, translating texts. You'll be able to answer things from one language to another. For those of you who have global teams, I think that's going to be a huge game changer for you as well. So, you know, we've got to keep our eye on this space. What I'm giving you here is definitely not a definitive list it's just something that caught things that caught my eye that I found particularly easy to use and that I thought could easily be done by anybody in in L and D and so for Canva for those of you I don't know if some of you are already using Canva I think it was Amy who said that they already are it is free to a certain extent and then the, otherwise the monthly fee is really low but i would consider that the templates there the presentations there there's video there there is so much there that would make your lives a lot easier and i love as well that it's australian as well so i would definitely have a look at that as again it's all part of the mix it's part of blending up learning in in different ways and the subscription is good the emojis there the gifts there's all the stuff that people want to see because that is what they see on their instagram or their facebook feeds and even some of you who are on linkedin linkedin is now doing that yeah, as soon as there's a nice photo and a nice video that post is going to do a lot better because that is what people are expecting. So please consider that. Um, I also really like, and sorry, I have no affiliation to any of these sites. Uh, seven taps, and we will send you that link again. There's quite a few, there's a bit of free usage there, so you can try it out. And a lot of QR codes. I know some organizations you're not allowed to bring your phone to work, but a lot of QR codes are being used that people can scan 
and something quick comes up with a quick little video, a quick little reminder of training. So it's done in a coaching style and done through email even as well. So that would be one that I'd encourage you to have a look at. Anyone tried Loom yet? Loom again started its, uh, started its journey in marketing. Um, you know, it's uh, <laughs> we we borrowing so much from marketing. It's really quite um, it's good for any of you who have used Loom. We'll send you the link as well. But it's a way of doing screen recordings. So those old days of putting an image for those of you who teach um, IT systems and you put a, an image and then you have those red arrows pointing at things and I, I could never work out those kinds of manuals. But Loom does it live for you and you can have a whole library of Loom's systems. Um, there Candice has given a great example even for uh, slide narration and I see a few people are using it there which is fantastic. Zappa is one of the key ways in which people are doing augmented reality, bringing text to life, including multimedia. I would have a look at what they're doing there. For this, I think you need a little bit of tech assistance. I didn't find that quite as easy, but again, it's part of the mix. It's part of the blend. It's a different way and augmented reality is also here to stay. And we can't ignore it. We can't expect everything to be just on a flat two dimensional view. It's going to be expanding into augmented reality. Virtual reality as well. Again, you need the tech assistance on this one. Uh, to me, it's just a bit too hard to do that myself. It, the price range starts to creep up a little, but hey, if there's something that an organization needs in workplace safety, in using particular appliances, knowing their way around a building, it's something to consider. Now, why should we just have a plain little map and this is where things are when we could do something so different and the headsets now are much more affordable than they than they ever used to be. I won't play you this particular demo now, but we will send you a link of me struggling through a virtual reality session where if you can see the person on the screen talking to me, uh, that was an avatar. So that's an avatar doing um, and responding to me in real time uh, it, it, through a tough conversation. I don't want to embarrass myself again because, boy, did I get feedback about how I held that tough conversation. So it's, uh, but it, we will send that to you as well because for, it, we include this now in our frontline leadership and emerging leaders program to help people really get a sense of what could happen when they hold a tough conversation because it's all fine to just read it and just do a little funny role play with each other. But when you're in the situation and you've got to work your way through it, it's very different. So we will send it. Oh, no, I don't want to Hello. see myself. Going on to the next one, that voice. Um, and uh, just another uh, thing to think about, and this was another vendor that was at the conference that I really liked because everything came in a box. And so the headset and all the gear that you needed came in the box and people were able then to experience um, what it's like uh, putting out fires or doing things that aren't so, so easy. So I hope I've given everyone a little bit of a zoom, 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 zoom to, to shake them up. Um, if you'd like to type into chat, let us know what you'd like to try that's maybe a bit different from today, something that you'd like to experiment with, something that you, you know, you would commit to doing. Please feel free to type into chat and let us know. Uh, we'd be keen to remember when it's out there in the world, you definitely more like likely to to commit to it. So a few oh, there we go. Tarek is going saying more videos. Thank you, Tarek. I'm going to hold you to that one. Absolutely. So a few final words as we as we start to wrap up and thank you everyone for putting wow those commitments in. Wow, 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 wow. Yes, yes. Love those. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, David. And so a few just final things um, as we bring this to, uh, to uh, an end is the saying that I like, 
don't let perfect be the enemy of deployed. In other words, get it out there. Don't wait for it to be absolutely right and signed off by 100 people and the storyboard was done and then they didn't like the color and the logo wasn't right. Get it out there. No one cares that your logo isn't uh, in placed in the exact right position. Keep thinking about how do we make this super high value? How do we include, thank you, Rosalind Clotilde, for all of that, use chat GPT, getting more creative, getting things going, just shaking it up a little bit. And thanks, Con, for saying, yes, let's experiment. Why not? So it's just giving it a go, trying it out. And then Ellis is like a kid in a, in a lolly shop. It may be better to be new, new to the field than doing some of the old stuff that we've been doing. Because I don't want any of us to become like this dog in this video. What happened with this dog, and I will play this for you in a moment, is that the dog we had um, was living in a house where in front of the, the main door, there was a screen door, and the screen had been taken down. So let's have a look at what happens with our dog. Buddy. OK, so <laughs> I don't want us to become buddy. You know, we've got to make the change ourselves. We can't stand and wait for somebody to open the door for us, remove the screen doors, whatever. We have to step through that door. We have to open that door from the inside and make those changes. Because if it isn't going to be us, then who is going to do it without question? And I also just wanted to show you my little chat GPT poem that I wrote in exactly one minute. Um, I will send it to you and see if you can top that if your <laughs> instructions to chat GPT were good. But what I'm just trying to say is let's try it out. Let's do things differently. And I'm really hoping from all these great commitments that I've seen in the chat that it's going to happen. So please speak to us about our live virtual classes. We're trying to introduce a lot of these new ways of doing things, shake it up, put out a lot of titles, engage people, really get them excited to be part of it and as well in our emerging leader program, which now can be for anyone anywhere in the world who can participate in the program and do things a little bit differently in that sense, including the virtual reality, which is now part of that. Thank you, thank you so much to everyone for participating, for all your great chats. Um, it's uh, really, <laughs> I, I can't keep up with the comments here because it's really so wonderful to, to see people engaging and thinking differently and committing to trying things out. I'll stay online. If anyone has any questions, um, please type into chat. We'd love to, to hear from you. Um, I think there were one or two people who might have had their hands up and I didn't have a chance to speak to them. Um, Meriki, if you've got any uh, questions, please just type into chat and we'd love to hear from you. And if you need any more information uh, from us and about us, please let us know. Thanks, Ingrid. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for all your great um, insights and all your comments as well. And we will send out the slides and we will send out a recording if you want to share anything with um, anybody else in your organization. Thanks, Ruth. Lovely to have you. And lovely to have everyone who, who has attended today. I will stay online.